Hello everybody, it's Tuesdays with Tony, uh, although it's Monday and again I'm not Tony but I could be. So <laughs> my name is Vinny Fanella and I'm with David French Music Company and uh, I have, uh, I want to talk today a little bit about putting a reed on a mouthpiece. We're going to be, be kind of basic today but, but we're going to hit on some real uh, important stuff and I have a special guest, He's, uh, it's his uh, second appearance on the uh, on the show, Arnie Krakowski, one of my good buddies and fine, fine tenor player. Um, so anyway, so uh, first I'm going to just talk about some real basic stuff, and that's a putting about reeds. First of all, reeds are, you know, um, you know, they're a pain, is what they are. Uh, you know, they, it's, it, it's not real easy to find a good reed. And I'm going to show you how to put the reed on the mouthpiece, it's pretty basic, and how to balance a reed. Uh, which is less basic and how to work on a reed, which is, which is, you know, a good thing to do. So, uh, anyway, mouthpiece. Can you see? Okay. So, mouthpiece ligature reed. Right? So, what, what I like to do is, I wanna, is first with the reed. To break, to break in a reed, what I like to do is play the reed for maybe five minutes and then and then put it away. And before I put it away, what I usually do is I, uh, I take, I, I put it on a flat surface and I, I sort of get the grease from my head, which is, you know, I have, a, I have quite a bit and, uh, on certain occasions. <laughs> and, and I press down on the reed. And I, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm sort of adding like oil to the, re to the reed and I'm also pressing the fibers down so they don't take water. So I do that the first day. The second day I do the same thing. Um, and I'm going to have Arnie talk about this because Arnie's like, a, he's, he's big on this stuff too. I also will take a, this thing, uh, which I call it, which is, it's a reed geek. They call it a reed geek. You can buy these from us. Um, it's a perfectly square tool. And at the end of, of the, set, the first few sessions, I'll just go over the back of the of the reed, gently with this reed geek, take off, and so I'm, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm making it a, a real uh, flat surface, uh, uh, how do I say it, um, yeah, so that, so that it sits on the table of the reed, of, of the, uh, excuse me, of the mouthpiece well, and, and creates a good seal. So then what I do, anyway, putting the, putting the reed in the mouthpiece, take the reed, this wet reed, and I leave the ligature on the mouthpiece, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this reed and I'm going to put it in like this. So the ligature, so I'm, I, I'm trying to not take the, 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 the reed and having the ligature go over because then I'm going to I'm, have a tendency to chip the reed. Uh, so anyway, so there we go. I don't know if you're, you're seeing this. I'm hoping you are. I did put that on. And then what I do is I... I I start to tighten the, the ligature. Now it's not even in place yet, but I start to tighten the ligature. I get the ligature down past this sort of crook in the, in the mouthpiece. Okay, and then I start to tighten the ligature, but I can still move the reed. So I'm, I'm tightening both guys here, both screws, and I'm moving the reed up so that I become tip to tip. Now as I become tip to tip, I'm also making sure that the bottom is centered. So I'm centering the bottom, I'm sort of doing this all at the same time. I center the bottom, I, I center the top, and I'm absolutely, for, for me, I like absolutely tip to tip. I think Arnie likes it down a little more. He'll tell us in a little while. <laughs> and anyway, I'm ab I go absolutely tip to tip. Now, once I get it in, again, I'm still tightening and I get these screws pretty tight, you know, and then I'm in. So now I'm in, I'm good. Now, if the reed plays well, that's nice. If the reed plays, if a, a little, if, if you want the reed to be hard, at, uh, if you want it to be stronger, you, you, you push up a little past the tip. That brings the heart up. This is the heart of the reed. And the reverse is true. If the, if, if you want to, if the reed plays real hard and you want to get it to play a little softer, you come down a little bit. Okay, that's that. One, a few other things that I'm going to bring on. So, 
Then what I, what I do is after, after I put the mouthpiece on the saxophone and I play the reed and I decide, is this a good reed, is it a bad reed? What I'll do is I'll balance the reed or check it for balance. And what, the way I do that is I take the mouthpiece, put it in my mouth, and I crack, I turn the mouthpiece all the way to, like, you know, like maybe what, 30 degrees this way. So what I'm doing is, uh, by, by that, is I'm, I'm covering, I'm blocking this edge of the reed so it doesn't vibrate. And then I can see how the reed plays on this edge, on the, right? So, and then what I'll do is I'll flip it the other way and, bl and block off this edge of the reed. I hope you can see. And, and what generally, what, on a good reed, it'll, it'll kind of sound the same either way. But on a reed that's kind of messed up, one side will feel real stuffy. So this, here's what I do. Then what I do is I take a tenor mouth, a tenor reed. If you're playing tenor, you can use a baritone reed. You can also use the same reed if you play alto. But and what I do is I stick the reed between, you know, the tip and the and the reed. Can you see that? And then I start to work on the reed. Now, if if you're a beginner, you might want to not do this at first because you know. Us old timers, we've been working on reeds forever. And so what I do is I just start to work just on the edge of the reed, the edge of the reed, just a little bit. I, now I can, use, I can use this reed geek. You know, I, I want to kind of stay away from the tip as much as I can, but just the edge of the reed and maybe just a little bit of the tip. Can you see that? Now, now I can use a reed geek. I can also use this stuff called reed rush. We sell this as well. This is reed rush. Okay, reed rush, and you can use it dry, or you can use it wet. If, if you soak this, it really works great. You soak it, and it becomes like really, like a, you know, softer. That's, a, that's, and now there's one other thing that you can do. This is a little more complicated. You can use a reed knife, or you can use one of these, these great Swiss army knives that are little tiny. And you can take, um, you can take wood off this way too. And the way you do that is you put your thumb here and you move the reed like this, the, the knife like this. And again, I'm taking just a little bit of wood off. So again, I would work on this and then I work just, you know, really, really carefully on that tip. If I hold this top reed back, you know, I push it towards the reed, then I, you know, I'm less apt to chip. And I'm, I'm, you always want to just go one way, or you'll, you know, but you experiment with that. So well, that's that. Let me see, what else can I say about reeds? You know, you know, you don't want to play too hard a reed or too soft a reed. You've got to determine that on your own. If, if the, uh, on, a, on, a, on a, a, a larger face setup, you'd, you'd sort of want a softer reed. But this is all determined by, by you know, your, your playing and, and uh, you know, the way you want your sound to be. So I hope I made some sense. So I'm, I'm going to bring on my good buddy here, Arnie Krukowski. How are you nice doing? Nice to see you today. Nice to see you today. Nice to see you today. And so talk about these. What do you think? Oh, wow. Well, the reed geek, they, I, just, I just geek the back. Within 15, 20 minutes, it warps. So, so, so I usually geek the back. And you can tell. Yeah. You got a reed there? Yeah. And you you can tell if it's if it's if it's cool because you'll see you'll see the excess reed dust on each side and a little space in the middle, which means it's not level. See? Yeah, it's hard to see that. You, yeah, you'll never see that. Now you won't see what it. You would see, what you would see is you'd say. See, a, there's a, a space right there. So that means that it was concave. So it's is a little. Concave it's, or it's it's concave. Yeah. So so I just do it. Until it's until I see the dust. There it is. Yeah. It's all, so now it's all even. even. And I I probably do it two or three times uh, within two days or something. And right. Then it kind of levels yeah. out. Cool. Leave the reed on the on the mouthpiece, which is kind of weird because if if you, if you leave it on too long, you, you know the mouthpiece can get funky. But for me, my, what for me, if I if I'm if I get a gig coming up that I, you know I, or, or recording or session or whatever. And I find a really good read, and I say, say I'm I, I'm warming up the, the instrument at home, and I'm going to play the, the session in two hours. Or I'm going to go to the gig in two hours. I'll sometimes leave the read on the mouthpiece and wrap it in in uh, 
they put it in a, like a plastic bag, yeah. and then and then it stays nice and yeah. you know it stays wet and it's and it seals and I don't yeah. know what you think. Well, about I do that. You know, Sonny Stitt always so I know always, that. always said that. Yeah. The only thing is, it will it will um, the saliva if it's a metal mouthpiece will eventually over the years pit pit the. Uh, the face of the mouth. Yeah, it's, it's not really great, it's not great for a rubber, a hard rubber mouthpiece either. Really. Yeah, I but mean, I, I go back and forth with it, you know. There were guys that we know of guys uh, from the old days, uh, Dave, uh, the baritone player, that used to always... Dave, Dave Kreutzer. Kreutzer, great, great <laughs> guy. And anyway, he used to always put, at the end of the gig, he would take a big plastic bag yeah. and put his neck in the mouthpiece. The neck in the mouthpiece yeah. and leave it on. And then the next day he'd take yeah, it out. I know a few and it guys, feels good. I think it feels great. Like a few guys do it in Tupperware. They leave the mouthpiece in Tupperware. Oh, yeah, with, yeah. With, with the reed on it. Cause it but the reed will, will uh, it'll get moldy. Yeah, right. It, right. You gotta it, clean it. I mean, you wouldn't want to leave it yeah. on for more than a couple of yeah, days. Yeah, I kind of take, take it off. off. I take it off. I try everything. Yeah. Ani's working all the time. Ani is working all the time. She's, she's, so he's dealing with the reading. Well, you know, I do, I do practice and teach with a softer read. Yeah. Get on the job and play a half step up, right? Yeah, and then I get, and then I get to a job. I, I will put a harder one on. Uh, I've got to play, especially practicing. You know, practicing with a hard read just doesn't, for me, doesn't make it. it just yeah. Time and right, time. right. And some of the some of the soft reads, look, if if you soak a read for ten, five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes. Play it, and you find out that it's soft. Just play it very softly for, for in the mid range for two, three minutes, and put it away, and play it the next day, and do the same thing. They will sometimes they, will, they, sometimes they sometimes, break it. Yeah. I don't have the patience for that, but I, but I try to do it once in a while. Yeah. It's really uh, a hassle, and the weather has a lot to do with it. humidity. Now I hate. I use soft reeds in the humidity, and I played with somebody last night who uses hard reeds in the humidity. So, right, it's all, it's all, it's all the way through. Yeah, it's, it, it is. Yeah. 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 So, uh, talk to me about um, your, your 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 favorite your, your favorite players, living players. Oh, my favorite living players. I was set up for this, by the way. Oh. <laughs> no, I mean like you know like. Yeah. Uh, but Arnie does want to... He, yeah, he, my favorite living players, I, I, I go the other way, man. I, I have four favorite players who I just, I, just, I just love them. Scott Hamilton from Rhode Island. I just love this guy, man. He's got huge sound, uh, plays melodies. Uh, I, Harry Allen, another guy from Rhode Island, Island, who I really dig, you, you know. And um, Ken Koplowski, and he's from Cleveland. Lives in New York. He plays. He is a great right, clarinet right. player, but he's a tremendous tenor player. Very unique sound. And Lou Tabakin is is one of my all time favorites. I was listening to him today just because of yeah. I knew and him. he's and not, and not he's a great monster flute player. You know, you know, unbelievable flute player. But I love his tenor playing. He's out of Sonny Rollins a little bit. Yeah. And I love those guys. And to me, they're modern. Now a lot of guys will say, "Oh no, they're not modern." But to me, they're modern. They don't. They don't think about um, chord scales or or, or or half diminished scales or pentatonic scales. They just play another melody over a set of chord changes, and and they do it very lyrically with big sounds and swinging all the way. So those are my favorite tenor players yeah. that, that are alive. I mean, then I like Hank, you know, you know Lester Young, Coleman Hawkins. Hank Mobley and Stan and Zoot and that. And these guys are, are, are right out of that same bag. And they're all out of, well, not all, you know, they're, they're, out, just, of, they're, they're out, out of, of prez. They're right? all out of prez. Yeah. And, and Lou, Lou is, uh, he's, I think he's more out of Sonny Rollins. Yeah, right, right. Uh, Coleman Hawkins. Yeah, and, uh, right, and Sonny's got out of Coleman Hawkins. He, well, he Sonny is out of Coleman Hawkins. And then I, I, one day I, I, I ran into him at Emilio's and all he talked about was Lester Young. Oh, yeah. And he talked about how Lester Young was God. So, yeah, you know, I think out of the two guys, Colin Hawkins and Lester Young, you got every player who exists today. They may not know that, or think that, but I, I really think that Lester played this way, you know, across, and and and, uh, and Coleman played kind of up and down a little bit. Tremendous sound, both of them, both of them. So those are my favorite. And players. you've uh, uh, we've had this conversation before, but but uh, you know you've uh, I and I agree. 
Artie's always said that, that Bird was like, you know, a speeded up prayer. Oh, I think so. You know, I mean, oh, and, yeah. and for sure. He was, oh, yeah. You know, he, Look, I, mean, I, I had this on. conversation the other day with a great friend of mine, Jeff Stout, and, and he, he, he has it down to three players. And I, I think I add one. He has it down to Louis, Prez, and Bird. Does it down in what respect? I mean, like those are the, kids, the whole those thing. Are the guys, the they created yep. the, the, the language. Yep. Yeah. He might be right. Yeah. I think I added Chris to it. Yeah, yeah. For real. Yeah, if you slow down Charlie Parker, I mean, he was he loved Chris. You can tell. I mean, there is one. I think there's one video with him and Chris. I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, it slow it down. He played across. Yeah. Right. Across. Sure. Across across the bar lines through the harmony. And, and and making another beautiful melody on top of the melody that was there already, if there was one, you know, he, he composed another melody and uh, beautiful. And then of course Train came along and yeah, yeah. that's a whole other thing, you know. Like, yeah, but if you hear Train in the beginning, he, he was oh, yeah. an R&B player, oh, man. Oh, right. You know, so he, who knows what, where he would be at today if he lived, you know, yeah. you know he could have come back, who knows. Right. You, you don't know. Right. You know, yeah, he, he changed. Well, you got. I guess you got to add him into the mix, man, because he he changed his. He changed too. the time thing too, right? Yeah, with the, I mean, the, the sound the, time. The, the eight notes changed. Yeah, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. but I I leave. I, I mean, I love I love Train, but I I knew forty years ago that I couldn't even come close to sounding like him, so I chose the other path. You yeah, know, you know, with um, Zoot now and, and Perez and those guys, and I'm gonna stay there. There you go. So I figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, but then, one thing I have to say: when I hear those guys play, and Scott and those guys, it's 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 warm and beautiful, man. And melodic. And melodic, yeah. with big sounds and swinging, and and they're not thinking that they know the chord changes. They're not thinking about putting scales in. You you know, they're thinking about making melodies. Right. So that's that's where I tend to go yeah. go yeah. go to. Yeah, and you have man, you have like a what, three CDs out. I have two? I have two CDs out. Two CDs. One one is called with with the great Georgie Masso, who's an unbelievable trombone player. Um, Where the tenor meets the bone is the first one, and the second one is it mine or yours? Same thing. Say that again. Is it mine or yours? Is but it it's M I N O R. Very good. It's a mine of yours. You know, mine Very of nice. Yours. Everyone should get them. <laughs> so yeah, I, I did, yeah, I have those. Those those are quite old now, but yeah, uh, they both have the same band. And was it the same rhythm set? Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. yeah. So uh, I know that you wanted to talk about articulate articulation. I so Today I want to talk about articulation in the jazz idiom, like for kids who are playing. Um, in the stage band or the jazz band about articulating the notes. Okay, so when I was young, like 15, 16, I was working in, in Rhode Island with all the old, they were very old, they were probably 30. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, they yelled at me constantly, no, that's short, that's long, that's short, that's blah, blah, blah. Okay, I had no idea why, but I, but I figured it out. And then when I went to, to Berkeley, John Laporte straightened me right out. There's three articulations. There's long, there's short, and there's semi-percussive. A long is, is a, a teepee, I mean, a uh, short is a teepee, a long is a dash like that, and uh, semi-percussive is a sideways teepee. Okay, long, eighth notes are long, always, except followed by a rest, then that eighth note is short. So, so if it was four eighth notes followed by two beats rest, it would be da 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 Da, 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 like that, okay. On the beat, quarter notes, 95% of the time, and I can still hear John in that screechy voice. He had a book, book too, with, with yeah. all that stuff in yeah. the dots and On the, the beat, quarter notes, <laughs> generally are short, unless the lead player wants, you know, if you were in the sax section, if you say, hey, hey man, I want those too short, and those too long, fine. But although if they're not marked, you can assume they're short. Off the beat, quarter notes are short, so it almost becomes an eighth note. And anything longer than a dotted quarter 
is a semi-percussive note, which means it's, it is attacked and there's no space between the notes. And, and that, that makes a band, I mean, I mean, if everybody's articulating, to, that, that makes the difference in the world. I mean, if everybody's articulating, Absolutely. if it's a sax section or, or a trumpet section or three horns or two, you're together. And if you go back to the A, the a section and repeat it, it's going to be the same way. And then, then naturally, if you say, "Well, let's let's play this one a little short," then you then you can deviate from that and, and do that. So I have all my students now. Th th this is not for the kids who, who are in um, concert band or orchestra. That is very similar, but that's not what this is for. So this is only for the kids, or or, or, or for the people who who want to play swing eights. It would be. Different, different if it was Latin, right, Latin, Latin, or, Latin or, or, or fusion, or fusion. Rock, right, it, you know, it be, it would be more, it would be more shorts involved. So I have a, uh, we're going to sing. Vinny and I are going to sing a rhythm that that's on the stand. The, the one that's this one here. Play and sing these. I got to put my glasses on. Okay. <laughs> my other glasses. So right. if you if you look close there, you can see the shorts, the longs. And the semi-percussives. Yeah, I can see a typo in this thing right away, man. Right there, that's a typo. That should be a semi-percussive. Oh, that should go the other way. Yeah. Oh yeah. Here it is. Okay, so we're going to sing with no repeats, and I like to use for these things da da because it, it it's kind of kind of sounds like you're playing it da 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 da. Okay, here we go. Right on the top. All right. One, not too fast. One. Yeah, and so so and that, and that, and that helps your breathing too because you can only breathe in certain spots because some of these phrases are two or three bar phrases. You, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, I'm going to show you. Uh, you know this, this thing here. Da, 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 da. Let's, let's, can you get him over here? Can you? Yeah, right oh, here. Oh, here we go. You know, you wouldn't breathe in here. You 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 go one two da 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 da. Big breath. Parts like the trumpet player. He's a great trumpet player. He's going to play exactly right, right, that way right. every time. He might right. put a little slant on it. Depending on who it is, and they, uh, and you know, generally four bar, eight bar phrases. I mean, yeah, and that's is a general rule. Yeah, you know? yeah, and these, but you can hear the phrase. Yeah, I mean, hopefully. And you look when I look at these, I don't look at the measure. I look at four bars at a time. These are all. I, I mean, I've been listening to, to to music so long that these are all common common rhythms right. that you see, and, and especially if the kids, if the students really really sing these. And then they get and they're playing a bass sheet shot, and they say, "Oh, gee, I know that rhythm." You know, well, hello, that's right. You know, you know, and it it, it is good for your jazz, for your imp improv, a little bit, a little bit, because you've got much more um, freedom when you're improvising lip slurs, and and you, you might not do all this. But I I do have an exercise using semi percussive and and short or I so like a blues would be. I, I make him stay on, on eight bars with a specific rhythm or, or six bars and then you can improvise on the last two or if it's a blues it would be ten bars and then you can play whatever you want on the last two bars but you got to come back to that rhythm and, mm -hmm. and it, it kind of like because most kids, when they're playing the blues scale, they stand up and take a solo. It's like, but you got to add rhythms to it, and then right. it makes it. And you can use a three or four note. Long, 
long, short. Ba Buddha, Buddha, ba. And, and it helps you think a little bit. Uh, um, and then when you get to that, you can start filling in a little bit. <laughs> Rhythms are the key. The uh, yeah, uh, the, the old uh, the basic band, like when they got started. What do they call them? Wrist band. What do they call those? It was a headband. Headband. No, when they music. would, they would, when they would, uh, these guys would just make find the riff and yeah. start riffing, and that's where that's it all where, came. That's from. where it came from. Yeah. And uh, you so, know, so if you make a little riff for yourself, you're practicing at home, and then you can start to hear what a blues sounds like, and you can you can you can get away from that riff for a minute, but you always know you can come back to it. Yeah. I, I, I sometimes, t I teach a thing too where, where I'll have a kid, you know, m make up his own rhythm and just yeah. play that rhythm to you know, 32 bars or 12 yeah. bars or 8 bars. Yeah, or, that's right. So it's all, about, it's all about rhythm. Yeah, because it doesn't matter what the notes are at that point, it, it's the rhythm. It gives, I, it, a forward, it gives it a forward motion and it gives you a chance to think too. If, if you know what that rhythm is, then you can punch in your own notes. And then you can change it a little bit. And the notes are less important. The lows and the notes are less important, but I the mean, rhythm. And and I I do believe that, yeah, that the rhythm is the most important yeah, thing. You, I you do. know, if you articulate everything, everything, every single note in a sax soli is articulated. Every note has some kind of articulate with it. And 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 even even jazz players listen to. Cannonball. A cannonball or a train or a press, they are articulating in some way each note. Yeah. They might do it with ear, you know what I mean? But you're doing something. No tongue. Yeah. Everything's tongue. It just depends. You know, Illinois. It's all air. Yeah. But there's something, and it just gives it it gives it a forward motion. So when I hear a player play that doesn't articulate at all, that's just kind of like floating, I I I I I I no, I just I just say, man, if you I, I think I think when you start articulating your your speaking. Yeah, it's like that that is that's that's it, man. That's a full package. Yeah. You know. And then the swing eighth notes, you know, that's a whole other story. I mean, oh, yeah. that, to me, I mean, I mean, try. I saw John Moscow once trying, you know, do it, and he, he did it better than anybody. To yeah. teach a club, teach a I class, saw that. I saw that. On video. You know, well, you know, everybody, everybody does. Uh, a lot of people think it's a, it's a dotted dotted eighth with a sixteen, dotted eighth sixteen, or, or triplets. So the, you know, but it's more triplets. It's more triplets. It's, uh, it's but it's one really to three, more one to listening three, to, the, yes. to the cats playing. Okay, so eight. listening. Good yeah. point. The first thing I ask every student when they who did you listen to today or oh, this week, uh, Mr. K. I uh, yeah. Okay, here's the deal. If you don't listen, I don't care if you play, if you want to play Sousa Marches, that's great. It doesn't have to be just. If you don't listen, it's over. Right. End of story. You've got to listen to something. Joe Bio always to say, if you want to speak French, yeah. and you never hear a Frenchman to speak French, yeah. you're never, you're never going to get That's it. right. So it's it. You gotta hear. You got to hear. You gotta if, you, hear. if you're into jazz, you got to, you got to listen to Basie and Woody Herman and, and, and pick I tell everybody, Louis, listen to Louis, he's yeah. got it all. He articulates, he swings, he plays melody, he's got a lot of soul in the sound. He's the cat. He's the cat. You've got to listen to something. If you're into uh, rhythm and blues, then listen to that. Every kid I ask, and half of the parents, well, we don't listen to music in our house. How can you not listen to music in your house? <laughs> That's a question you're going to have to ask. Uh... I don't know who you'd have to ask. Who? Donald Trump. Oh, 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 a little eight, a little duet. It's pretty simple, but it has longs, shorts, and it does have a semi-percussive note right there, man. I hope we play it. I hope we play it right. <laughs> and you're going to show the, the folks of... Yeah, that's it there. Yeah. That's right. Okay, so not too fast, me. It's like.
do that, do 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 do. Right? Okay. One, two, ah ah ah. 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 Change it and I'll follow you. Maybe okay. make the low and I'll get I'll try to catch you. Okay. Alright, one, two, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> If I'm in a section and he's playing lead, and it says it says long or short, and you you play it your own way. It's my responsibility to go with yeah. him, even if I don't like it. That's right. So I did. I kind of read your mind after the second bar there. I figured out what you were doing, and then I hung with you. That's the way to do it. <laughs> that's the way. That's the way to do it. You got to listen to everybody. You that's know. Right. If you're in the sax section, you listen to the alto player. If, you're, if the whole band is playing, then you got to listen to the trumpet player. He's usually playing the lead. And, and, and it's, it's and a really shot, too. Well, whatever, whatever, but <laughs> Just kidding, you know, you, know, you have certain responsibilities <laughs> in, in, a, in, a, in an ensemble, and that's one of them. You know, you know I once heard this thing, and it sounds so, like, it sounds real different, but, uh, but they said, you know, it was like, if I'm sitting next to you, I, I play you. I'm like, Instead of playing me, I play you. You play me. And, you know, and it's it's kind of a, it's a concept. And well, you know, the second the second alto player has got more responsibility than right. the lead player. Man. Yeah. He's got to he's got to keep keep up with what whatever you kind of read your mind, and figure out where you're going. He's got a double responsibility. Yeah. He he really does. Oh. So that's what I say about uh, articulation. Very very important. Very, very, very important. And then there's little shakes and you know, little ornaments, trill shakes, doits, and all that stuff. That's different. Got to listen to the music. Got to listen to the music. Oh, yeah. Got to listen. Whoever you like, I, I tell all my students, pick somebody and hang with it for a little while and tell me if you like it or you hate it. You know, yeah. uh, I have good luck with some, but some some don't listen to anything. Well, I listen to the rap. I listen to rap. Well, there's no saxophone plays in rap. <laughs> rap doesn't swing. Well, it does. On, you know, I'm sure it does. You know, if, in its own, th I don't know anything about it. You know, but if you if you're going to play in the stage band and you want to stand up and, and play an improvised solo, well, then you got to listen to someone. Right. Totally. It doesn't have to be who I like. It has to be someone who you like. You know. And that's so it. that's that, man. So listen. You gotta give me the recipe now. <laughs> last week, the last, last one was okay. was oil and was garlic and oil. Garlic and oil. Aglio Rio. Aglio Rio. Now listen to this. I went up to Federal Hill and they had they had they had spaghetti a la Emilio, believe it or not, and it was aglio olio but with broccoli. 
Oh yeah, and, sure. and, um, and black, in black, and, and black uh, mushrooms. Olives, yeah. Olives. Oh, nice. Okay. The vodka sauce. All right, no, okay, so well, right, I'll, I'll make this quick. Okay. <laughs> so, all right, so vodka sauce. Great, the great recipe, and it's real easy. And so here's what you do. Powdered pasta, Yeah. right? And then you, so you, uh, that's over here. And then you, a quarter cup of, of olive oil. Yeah. Uh, I like to, I like, I, I'll use a whole onion, like a big onion, and cut it up. What kind cut, of onion? A red onion? No, or? no, like a white onion. Okay. You know, a sweet onion, you know what? I'll cut it up and like cook that, caramelize it, put a little hot pepper in there maybe. Yeah. You know, you know, maybe, you know, the uh, um, spice of your choice. I, I like fennel seeds. People, yeah, some people don't like. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. so just let's just say hot pepper and the, and the caramelize the, the onions. And then you t I get a 28 ounce can of Italian tomatoes. They have to be Italian tomatoes. Yeah. Because the American tomatoes are all stringy. So they got the they, yellow. They got the yeah, yellow. That's right. You the got yellow wrap. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Then you take the tomatoes. You put the whole can in. You smush up the tomatoes with. with your finger. I do it just with my hands. Yeah. I squish them all up. Yeah. And then you put in a quarter of a cup. You, so you cook that. Up. This does only takes a little while. You only have to cook this for maybe the sauce for maybe twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. And then as as you uh, so as it's cooking, you put in a quarter of a cup of vodka. Put in a quarter cup of vodka, and that sweetens up the tomato. And then, right before you're going to put the, you're going to mix the pasta with the with the sauce. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. You put in a half a cup of heavy cream, just right before it's all done, uh, nice. so it becomes like a pink sauce. Yeah, yeah. Then you drain the pasta. You make you get the pasta out that day. You drain the pasta and you throw the pasta in the in tomato the frame, mix. In the, in the mix. And you, t you just, and you cook it another couple of minutes. It, it, it takes it absorbs all the, the, the tomato. And then you. You hit it with the, uh, and you put in fresh parsley, yeah, and grated cheese. Yeah, oh, very nice. I like. I think I'm gonna make it tonight. There you yeah. go. I like it. You don't put any water in from the from the. Uh, no water. No I thought water. your mother said water all not, the time. Not in this one. No. There'll be water if you like use the. It's in the pasta. It's in the pasta. Yeah. No, I'm not. You know. Nice. Yeah. So anyway, okay, we're gonna say goodbye. Okay. So look at so um so thank you for hanging with us. I hope hope that was that, that was informative. Um, I just want to say one thing. June second, we have a, a big sale here at the store. Uh, double discounts on all Yamaha Pro instruments, so you get you get a two hundred dollar rebate. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And uh, is this this might even be it? No, is this, this is a oh, one. <laughs> anyway, bye everybody. Bye. Thank you so much, Johnny. Thank you. You're Ciao. welcome. See you next time. Bye-bye.